Hello, welcome back. Uh, we were discussing a very important uh, part of work and energy. Uh, before I get into the concept of potential energy, I did give a, uh, an idea of what potential energy is and how it was defined, but I'm going to go into great details. But before that, how to prove a particular force to be conservative or non-conservative. As I've been telling in my previous lectures, that you could see physically you can talk of gravity as this, uh, electrostatic force as conservative, light spring force as conservative. I did give all the details of that. But then if one goes mathematically, how would you prove? And then how to get the work done? In fact, when I gave you a few examples of this, I think I wrote down around 10 to 12 uh, possibilities of uh, the uh, force expressions and then uh, what is the work done and uh, based on the path how to get the work done and we saw in one case the other day when the force was conservative it was immaterial whether you go along any path of your choice or a given path or some, some, some other path it makes no difference whatsoever provided the initial point and the final point are one and the same, then you will definitely have the work done to be the same. That's what I'm trying to explain in the diagram. This is the previous example. Now, I'm going to retain the, these the three cases. First, I think we did with this conservative aspect. Now, the second one also, we said it is conservative. That also we will see. Uh, when you say this is a conservative force, how do you get the work done? W is equal to F dot dr or fx dx plus fy dy. So then you have integral y dx plus x dy. Now, there is one way to write it, it is, I can write it as d of x1. What do you mean by that? If I take differential of this, I am not saying with respect to what, then you will get y dx plus x dy. That's how it is. That means this is a perfect integral. This is a perfect integral. The answer is x, y. Is an exact differential exact differential and if it is exact differential it is a material about the path you you take from any point to any point you have x2 y2 minus x1 y1 what is x1 0 y1 0 x2 3 y2 3 what is the uh, thing that you get from here x2 y2 9 minus 0, 9 units again. You are getting 9 units as the work done in this case. This is one way to show. You need not have to do this all the time. But I am just giving you this. This is fine. Now how to go with the other technique? I am going to give you all the techniques. Don't get carried away with one and then if you are lined up with terms at one stage, if you are not in a position to express this, then you face lots of problems. So what I'm going to do here is uh, the same thing I will do as uh, integral y dx plus integral x dy. This is the first. I think I choose this. I know this is the path from here to here. What is the equation? Y is equal to zero. And now this is x is constant. So this equation is, I already showed it to you in the previous example. In a similar way, 0, 0, but this is y is varying from 0 to 0. So equation is x is equal to 0, and here it is y is equal to 3. And this is 0, 0 to 3, 3. I told you dy by dx is 3 by 3, 1, or x is equal to y, or y is equal to x. First, if I take the first case, y0 means this will cancel, and then dy is also zero, y is 0. So, from 0, 0 to 3, 0, 
the work that is here. Now the question they may ask, what is the work done in this case along x-axis? Your answer must be zero. Because along x-axis, what is equal to zero? Suppose if I take a long y-axis, then x is equal to zero. Then x is equal to dx zero, x is equal to zero. Therefore, when such problem is given, they say the work done along the coordinate axis is zero. So that leaves you with only this part. X is equal. This part has become zero. X is zero plus x is equal to three. Therefore, dx is zero. I write x is equal to three. Therefore, dx zero. So this will get cancelled. And this is three dy. So integral three dy is three y. Y varies from zero to three. Therefore, answer is nine plus zero nine. I want you to understand how am I doing it. First I took along this axis, then along this line. The axis means line. Along this line, then along this line. That's how I got the answer. Is this clear to you now? So the first part I got 9 units. And uh, second part, you can see, first is again 0, because x0, dx0, both will cancel. In this case, uh, so y is equal to 3, therefore dy is 0. So this will get cancelled. And y is equal to 3, so this is 3dx or 3x. x also varies between this. So incidentally, you are getting along this path, uh, y axis and uh, y is equal to 3. You are getting the same as the first case. Now this case, y is equal to x, what do you keep? Any one. So x dx and this is x dx. It becomes, isn't it? Y is equal to x. dy is dx. So x dx plus 2x dx. What is 2x? x squared. And this is 0 to 3. Now look, again you prove that the work done in all these three cases is one. Not only in these three cases. You take any part, you are going to get this. That is true because when we got d of x, y as exact differential, then there is no issue at all. It is clear. So the work then can be exact differential, can be inexact differential, but heat is always an exact differential. Okay? Exact differential means you get a perfect integration. So that only depends on the limits and nothing else, no path at all. Okay? So if we have proved two cases, uh, this is done, this is done. Uh, Alright. And uh, of course I did not have to do, you can try this, this is fairly simple. This is fairly simple. Now let us see these are non-conservative forces. This is interesting, we will see. Uh, fx dx integral x square y dx plus uh, x y square dy is done. Right? Now this is uh, now uh, there is uh, no way that you can combine these two. So it's not possible. So go by path. First is first path y is 0, therefore dy is 0. So dy, this will cancel, this will cancel. Again along the axis, y is 0. You got the point? This is the first one. Uh, then x is equal to 3. Therefore dx is equal to 0. d is 0, this will cancel. x is 3, substitute here. 3y square dy. What is 3y square dy? y cube. Oh, isn't it? 0 to 3. 27. So the work done here you are getting it as 27 units. Fine. Now let us go to 2 x0, so dx0, this both will cancel out. So y is equal to 3, dy is 0. 
I am giving you every time this detail because you understand the process. So y is equal to 3, dy is equal to 0. Therefore, uh, this will cancel. This only will come. What is that? 3x square dx. Because y is equal to 3. Isn't it? 3 uh, x. So what do you get? x cube. 0, 2, 3. So this is also 27. Got it? Fine. So I am erasing this. Now go to the third one. y is equal to x and dy is equal to dx. Any one you convert. So if I say x, x cube dx plus x cube dx. So 2x cube dx, everything I converted. What are you going to get? 2x raised to 4 by 4, 0 to 3. So what do you get? 27 into 3, 81 by 2. This is 40.5 units. Now look, although these two parts you got the same answer as work done, but if you go along another path, the work done is completely different. This is uh, work done in this case is path dependent. And we have seen this is a non-conservative force. So, I am sorry, not only this one, I am talking about this, I did this. So, in non-conservative force, if I generalize, what are you going to get? In the case of non-conservative force, work then depends on the path you choose. I will get mathematically. I need not have to do an explanation for how to got this. It's just a guess. If with the function were to be like this, what could be the other one? That's all I am trying to do, nothing else. You got the point? So, one important thing we got, a conclusion. In the case of conservative forces, work then depends, I mean, is independent of the path. In the case of non conservative forces, work then depends on the path. Whichever path you take, you will get different values. Incidentally, one or two paths may have the same value, but it is purely coincidental, not as a rule. But if you take a conservative force, it is a rule. Any path you choose, you are going to get the same, but never take that as a definition. You may use it, use it, fine. It's one of the very important characteristic features of conservative force. Okay? Fine. So I'm sure now by now you should have become familiar with these things. Uh, you can choose any one of these things. I'm going to, I'm sure you're going to get in a similar way. You try it on your own. Uh, which is conservative, which is conservative. This is non conservative, non conservative is path dependent. Conservative is path independent. Okay? Likewise, you can do. This is how you have to do. Take the path, get the equation. Line equation and differentials, then substitute it over there. Is this clear to you, my dear friends? Right. So I am presuming that you are comfortable with this. This is very crucial, very important. Now, coming to, okay, you said it is conservative force. It's a conservative force. Efc is minus grade u. I have told you whenever force is conservative, its curl is always zero. If this is zero, this is bound to be a gradient. And what is the meaning of this gradient also I have told you. I have told you the meaning of gradient. If you want, I am writing here. Likewise. Why this negative sign here? Well, this is very crucial. Very crucial. Uh, you 
have to define the protection energy. Now, this is the protection energy. What do you mean by protection energy? If you do work against any internal conservative force, if you do work against internal conservative force, work done against internal conservative force, what will happen to all this? This is stored as potential energy. The advantage of potential energy is you can, the system can use it as and when it requires. It, if it wishes, it may convert into thermal energy, it's up to it. If it wishes, it may convert into other form of energy which we know very well called kinetic energy. Any moving body possesses this kinetic energy. Right? Kinetic means in motion. So the energy possessed by any moving body is what we call as kinetic energy. Kinetic energy can be by the system also. And potential energy is enabled. But Potential energy is not a universally defined phenomenon. Uh, for example, as I told you, uh, I have a, a rough surface, I place a body and then I drag it along this. I now have to do work against this uh, kinetic friction. And the kinetic friction, what is kinetic friction? Kinetic friction is a non-conservative. So what is going to happen the moment you do all the work done is converted to thermal form of energy. Thermal energy. Thermal energy is immediately dissipated and spread over the environment or the surrounding. There is no way you can catch it up and use it. You know one important thing that you should understand if you look at the whole of mechanics, the entire purpose of mechanics is to look at does it uh, get controlled by any fundamental principles. Yes, of course it is. It is. Number one, conservation of linear momentum. Number two, conservation of uh, mechanical energy. I will come to that. And conservation of angular momentum. Wonderful concepts. Any problem you take, it's, uh, you can solve it based on only these three concepts. That's it. And this is very important. Very, 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 very important. And that is why I'm spending time on this. People get, you know, always uh, get doubt. Energy. There's an energy, okay, which a capacity to do work is called energy. A various energy forms exist. Say so potential, kinetic, thermal, chemical, electrical, several forms of energies are there in the universe. Which form is useful to us? You know, right now we have all over the globe plenty of thermal energy available. Is there any way for us to make use of it? The pity is when sun is able to give you so much of energy. We still go inside the house and try to light a gas stove or something else, something else. In those days they used to take burn coal or burn wood and once gas came into existence, everything is taken out by gas. Or you go with electrical stoves, electrical form of energy for what? For heating the whole thing. And naturally heat is available. Naturally heat is available. Now everyone wants to use electricity. Now is there any way that we can convert this form into electrical uh, uh, energy form? Yes, of course it is. It's been done with the help of solar cells. It's been developed. It's been uh, 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 encouraged by the governments all over. That's fine. But the irony is that, look, even in summer, when somebody wants hot water, he never put uh, the vessel outside right in the direct sun. He always prefers to put it there and then boil it and then only use it. I mean, this is, anyway, that is one way of uh, uh, doing things. But, but when such huge potential form 
way. It's a protect no it's a protect clarity, but it's available in plenty. Is there any way that we can make use of this thermal energy to other useful forms of energy? All the energy I may not need it right now. I know. See, my human body is a system. It's a system. The whole thing is a system. How does it function? I take breakfast, I take lunch, I take supper, I take some snacks, and I take some drink. What do we do? What do we do? Don't tell me about the time. Time has the text, but it's fun about the time. But if otherwise you can't survive, you, know, you take the food so that the energy that is converted, and that energy is useful to you, well, for me to walk, for me to run, for me to move here and there, for me to lift the things, then what am I doing? I am storing all this as energy inside. I may call it as potential, but potential has a different definition. So I try to convert all that into some form of internal energy. This internal energy, I have the ability to use. I want to run, so I am able to convert some of the energy that I have into a uh, kinetic form of energy. I am able to do. Now take the example of a machine, say scooter. A scooter, that's fine. You can put petrol. And uh, there is a mechanism by which the whole thing is converted, that is the fuel for it. Food is fuel for us, and you try to go, suppose petrol is over. The vehicle stops. Hmm. It doesn't have that storing capacity. The human body has a tremendous storing capacity. On an average, a human being can survive without food for 35 days. There are cases when people are surviving for beyond 50 days also. So, you have all that stored part, you take out, still survive, still you are able to breathe, you are able to make, you are not able to move, but then you are able to survive. Uh, a small example, I mean, you take a small baby, who is around three, four years old, and it's like three, four years old, babies are, uh, you know, a little problem, I think, because you can't carry them, uh, because uh, it's a chubby chase, it's very difficult. And you can ask them to walk along with you. But then there is a way that the husband and wife are walking along with their son, who is around three to four years, and then the boy is walking. The boy started, hey, my daddy, I'm suffering from pain, please lift me up and hold me. Then you talk, start telling him, well, look, don't worry. And if you walk for a few more minutes, then it will be a chocolate. So that is, in fact, incidentally, corruption begins there only. Corruption begins with parents. I start showing this, this kind of a thing. So tomorrow he will do only if something else is given. I mean, that's it. Right. Oh, he walks for a few more minutes and again he says, Daddy, Daddy, again you tell him. You can make him walk. He doesn't want to walk, but you can walk for some more time. Can you do the same thing to a scooter? You tell the scooter once the petrol is over. Mm, a scooter, scooter, please uh, uh, come to uh, the petrol pump. It is hardly two kilometers. Please, will it move? So that is an inanimated body. You are an animated one. So I have an ability. I have ability to store the energy. All stored energies are not called potential. You can store electrical form of energy in the terms of batteries. You can uh, uh, store even some other forms of energy. I am sure if the storage is mechanical form, because food is food calorie. And you know, one food calorie is equal to 1000 uh, uh, heat calories, thermal calories that you will find. I talk about that in here. But then here, the storage of energy, if you do in mechanical sense, then we call it as potential energy. Maybe you could have called mechanical potential energy, you could have been a much better word. But it is called potential energy, and the food intake that they take is converted to internal energy. Likewise, in so many ways. 
The petrol that you are putting over there through the machine, etc., it has its own engine, it functions, and then finally it is converted to kinetic energy. That's how we are being converted energy from one form to the other. Now, coming back, every work done against the mechanical force cannot be stopped. It can be dissipated through cascade process. Uh, all the molecules get into random motion once you disturb it. And the random motion is at the micro level, macro, there's nothing but uh, uh, thermal form of energy. More of the kinetic energy, randomness, more is the temperature. So we will we'll discuss that in kinetic theory of gases. But one thing you remember, when you go, these are all macro level uh, forces. I'm talking about world and I'm talking about. But if you go to molecular level, very rarely you come across non-conservative forces. Most of them are treated as conservative forces only. Okay, but point. Now what the against internal conservative force is stored as potential energy or work done by internal conservative force. Against. Against means if I want to work done by work done by internal conservative forces is minus delta u. Now this is the very important. Uh, how and how can I tell you? The work done against means you will get positive. Work done by is this. How did you get this? Now take any one dimension here. So we will say F is equal to minus du by dx. Of course this is Fc1. Or minus du is equal to Fc dx. What do you get here? U1, 2, U2. Minus U. And all you bring minus sign on to this side. What is this? Work done by conservative forces. That of course I said is always different. Now how do you write this? U2 minus U1. That is nothing but delta U. Or WIC is equal to work done by internal conservative forces. That is what I have tried to write here. You have got to note down these points, my dear friends. The change in the potential energy is, uh, uh, suppose if I say work done by gravity, if you want to get in terms of the potential energy, of course you have to use uh, minus delta u. In other words, I will tell you here, Suppose U is given how to get force F C is minus D U by D R. It is a general form I am writing. In, in fact, how you should write? Fc is minus of I dou u by dou x. I hope uh, this is clear to you. Hmm? Uh, u is equal to x square y z. What is the force? Suppose if I am asking, what do you do here? Fc is equal to minus i dou u by dou x. That means this is kept constant. So 2xyz plus j dou u by dou y x square z dou u by dou z x square z. This is how you are going to get the forms. Very simple, direct differentiation, but partial. 
kann es den Übrigen Sinn nehmen. Der liebt sich in Welt und leidet Klinik. Das ist ein 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 Klinik. So, minus uh, d by d of 3r squared, 6r. So, I have seen the word of minus 6r. Likewise, you have to get it. It is claiming, right. But you may negative it for positive. That's only direction. Therefore, you don't worry about that. Any vector form is no issue at all dealing with positive and negative. But yes, scalar, you have an issue. I'm going to discuss that here. Yeah. So, that's fine. Okay. Now, I have given, if u is given, how to get force? Fine. Simply differentiate and with a negative sign. Now this is very, very important. Be careful. Supposing f is given, how to get u? f is given, how to get u? You have just shown Delta U is minus integral F dot dr. That's how you have to get. To get my point, this is very important. Remember, uh, you have already done F is equal to Ix plus J. See, unless it is a conservative force, you can't define this. So if I feel like then what do you get here? X dx and what is the dr? I dx plus j dy. So x dx plus y dy. So how much? Minus x squared by 2. That's how you are going to get the potential energy. Negative sign is very important. Negative sign is very important. You know, okay? Now, so we have just shown how to get f if u is given and how to get u if f is given. So you can easily play with that and get those values. What about that? Then you uh, uh, 1 comma 1 to 2 comma 2 or 2 comma then substitute and get that. You are going to get it. Path is independent. When you don't have it uh, depend on the parking cars, I am defining u. U is dependent only for conservative boxes. Therefore, you can directly substitute the limits and get the answer. Alright? Now, so the uh, thing that we have written here minus du by dr. When you say u is potential energy, now this is a very interesting thing. Uh, for example, you see, this is a ball. In this ball, I have a marble here. Suppose this marble, you push it slightly. It will go and then come back, but it doesn't stop here, it will go and come back, and come back. So if, what does it start doing? Oscillating. This is a very interesting phenomenon. Right? Now, I take a flat surface. Suppose I say I push it, it will go like this somewhere, it will stop. The other case, I have a ball taking in the reverse and put a marble on the top, slightly push it, this goes on and on and on forever. If you convert these three cases into a phosphoric thing or a fluid, anything I try to take one parcel of fluid and suppose if I push it up. Suppose it comes back, if it tends to come back to the original position, what happens? The marble pushed it, it went till this point, it will come back. Why? Because the force of gravity is pulling it back here. 
We are trying to disturb it and something else is trying to restore it. What is trying to restore? And that restoring ability this is a restoring force in this case. What Paul has restoring ability. And remember, in mechanics, you should understand few. The restoring ability is called elasticity. So remember, in mechanics, all chapters are interrelated, interconnected. Restoring ability. Here I am talking of a force. So there is a restoring force it is bring back. But then it is coming from the low velocity. But by the time it comes here, it will definitely have some velocity in this direction by virtue of inertia. A body continues to, uh, to be at rest or move with uniform velocity if you are a motor force is acting. So it will continue to move, but force me try to receive the motion and it becomes zero. Then because the force the restoring will come, bring back the body plane. So it keeps on oscillating. So for any oscillation, what is necessary? I'm talking of only Mechanical oscillation. For mechanical oscillation, elasticity and inertia are a must. I have shown it to you. Now, similarly, when I pushed a parcel, if it has a tendency to, to come back to the original position, it doesn't stop there by virtue of inertia. It tries to go down, so the restoring force pull, pushes it up. And once it comes here, again by virtue of inertia, it will go up, come down, go up, come down. This is how this body starts oscillating. Right? And uh, at this instant, if you see, what is the net force? Zero. What is the net force? Zero. What is the net force? Zero. Whenever net force is zero, we call it as an equilibrium. It's a case. There, but there are three types of equilibrium here. Everywhere is in minus zero. Everywhere it is in mechanical equilibrium. So, when you say it is in mechanical equilibrium, why do you distinguish three types of cases? Because, one, this is a stable form of equilibrium or it is a stable equilibrium. Means, when the body is disturbed from its position of equilibrium, it will eventually come back to the original position. If there are no dissipative forces, no viscous forces, no frictional force, and that is impossible. If it were to be like that, this body would keep on oscillating forever unless you go and stop. But we know viscous forces are present, friction is present, so the dissipative forces are present. So it will go like this and go this, ultimately it comes to a stop. And you know one very important thing? It is this disturbance that creates waves, mechanical waves, elasticity and inertia. If the equilibrium is stable, then only waves can be generated. Come to this part. Here, what is that you are watching? I push it. It's going and stopping, going to some new position and stopping it. So, but it is not coming back, nor is it going forever. Small push, push it to there and stop it. That is what we call it. So, well, first this is called as stable equilibrium. This is neutral equilibrium. And this, a small push is there, it will go on and on and on forever. This is called unstable equilibrium. 
Stable equilibrium, neutral equilibrium, unstable equilibrium. Okay? This is very important. Now you see that. If I take by go by gravity, I know let me say this is zero potential energy, and you have the highest potential energy. So U is maximum here. And here U is minimum, the lowest point. This is the highest. So when the potential energy is a minimum, you get stable equilibrium. When potential energy is maximum, you get unstable equilibrium. And here, U, U is same. U is constant. It is neutral equilibrium. Conceptually, you should understand. Conceptually, if you push a parcel, it will go and stop the neutral. But if I push it, and it will go on and on and on. Till that point, this whole thing is in an unstable equilibrium. But generally, unstable equilibrium cannot last long in nature. Nature is almost 99% in the stable equilibrium. That a very small fraction of unstable equilibrium is causing so much of havoc in the form of cyclones, troughs, depressions, monsoon, there are so many things. That is the, what it is resulting in, if you remember, right? Now, if u maximum, u minimum, now, but in all the cases, what is common? u minimum, f0, u maximum, f0. So just because f is 0, you cannot say. Right? What is the relation between F and F? For U minimum means what? U is minimum. One. First derivative must be zero. For a minimum, local minimum and local maximum, first derivative must be zero. Second derivative must be positive for minimum. And here, this is for stable equilibrium. For neutral equilibrium, du by du r zero, obviously, this is also zero. But when you come here, du by du r is zero. is negative. Very, very crucial cases. I am talking about the most crucial cases. So this is stable equilibrium. But what is F? This is nothing but minus F. So if you write uh, minus df by dr is equal to this. Uh, df by dr, if it is negative, it is stable equilibrium. Be very careful, never get confused. Remember with u, right, then you will understand. So first derivative of force, if it is negative, stable. If it is zero, stable. Sorry, I think I made a mistake here. This is not correct. Uh, b square u by dr square is negative and here du by dr is 0 is d square u by dr square. I thought this is neutral, this is unstable. Make that small correction there. So now you have got this. Uh, so first derivative of force if it is negative, then it's stable, positive. In this case what do you get? df by dr is positive for unstable. And here, of course, f0, df by dr also must be 0, then it is neutral. 
And this is very important to remember. Okay? Uh, if you try to plot them, then you know where is your uh, stable equilibrium, where is your unstable equilibrium. Say for example, I'm taking F. F X. Now, what, what are the zones of equilibrium? Say, for example, this zone. What is uh, DF by DX here? Positive. That means unstable equilibrium. Here, Slope is zero. So this is slope. Slope is zero. So neutral equilibrium. This is slope is negative, therefore stable equilibrium. Likewise with this for force. Now if I give you a plot of U, U X. Now look. What is this zone? Now, du by dx. You see, in the case of uh, u, what you have to look at is the local minimum and local maximum. To say stable and stable, this is local maximum. Local maximum means uh, unstable. This is a local minimum means stable. Okay? Now this is neutral. You get the point? Unstable, stable, neutral. You can take slopes and then talk about it. Okay? Here second slope also you have to take otherwise you don't get it. That is how you can look at unstable, stable, neutral, unstable, stable, neutral, equilibrium. Okay? The rest we will continue in my next lecture. Thank you very much. Bye.